Welcome to Occupy Boston Live. I'm here with Betsy Bozier from Occupy Natick and Occupy the Verbs. Betsy, welcome to Occupy Boston Live. Now, my first question would be to you is, um, what made you start an occupation? Um, well, personally, I was motivated by the issues that came out of the Occupy Wall Street movement. I had heard about it in the summer from my son, who had posted the Occupy Wall Street event on his Facebook page. And I thought it sounded interesting. Uh, I went to, I followed it for about the first two weeks that it was happening in New York, and I was sort of fascinated seeing what was going on and, and right. you know, what the buzz it was creating. And when it was announced that Boston was going to start their own occupation, I went to Dewey Square the first night to see what was going to happen. And it was a little anticlimactic, but um, right. I was hooked. And uh, so, have you ever done anything like this before? I mean, what's your, what's your background? Have you have you walked the streets in protest before, or was this the first time? Um, I hadn't actually ever participated in a uh, protest or demonstration, but I was active in starting a grassroots organization around gun control. So I was familiar with right. act activism and, um, you know, advocacy issues, so. Right. So it was your son who actually posted something on Facebook. You mm -hmm. saw it, you wanted to check it out to sort of protect your son or see what he was up to. Yes. And, and what, did you, what did you see there that made you want to go actually get up off your chair and take action? Um, well, the issues that they were talking about, the, the influence of money in politics, and I'm sort of a, a political hobbyist. I actually used to work for a, a state legislator, and I've done a lot. I've been active in political campaigns. I'm a town right. meeting member in Natick. So, um, but I see the, the influence of money, and I get frustrated mm. as somebody who cares about our democracy and our political system right. to see the unfair influence it's having uh, in drowning out the voices of the people, and that's really what motivated me and spoke to me and made me want to get involved. Okay, so, so you went to the Occupy Boston, the first one. That was a bit anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. So what got you further involved? What, what made you actually start a movement of your own? Um, I actually went, you know, down to Dewey Square a few times and saw what was going on there and then noticed there was a posting through Move On that there were certain Occupy right. meetings they were trying to start in more suburban areas and someone in Needham was organizing. So I went to the Needham meeting um, and there were over 30 people there and it inspired me. I said, well, I'm just going to throw up a meeting in Natick and see if anybody comes. And I anticipated it would be me and like two other die-hard activists, you know, types yes. that might show up. But uh, over 50 people came and I was really amazed. So didn't you want to actually um, do a physical occupation? Because that was the style at the time, Occupy Wall Street and then Boston and right. Los Angeles. Why not Natick? What, what made you do a, take a different angle? Um, well, for me personally, camping out wasn't something that appealed to me, quite <laughs> frankly. <laughs> no, I, I give you know hats off to the people that wanted to do that, and I think right. it was really an important uh, symbolism, and certainly that space was important. Um, but I, that wasn't something that appealed to me, and it wasn't uh, something that I thought was necessary in order for there to be change or action. Right. It wasn't anything that I thought was necessarily going to appeal to a suburban group. Although one of the ideas that's come out of that is encouraging people to pitch tents in their yards as a show of solidarity or at some point having a public space or a, a highly visible space where we pitch some tents, not necessarily that people have to live in, but just as a statement of solidarity. Right. So when you saw the Occupy movement in Boston, did you, did you actually think that was an effective use of, of time or mm -hmm. you thought that's okay for them to do that, but we need to do it in a different way? Was, was that actually to... Um, appeal to a different audience? I mean, I think certainly living in the encampment appealed to one kind of audience, but I was down there several times, including Thanksgiving, and I was amazed at the diversity of people coming by, dropping off food from, you know, clearly a very well-off suburban family bringing their kids down and bringing food to an elderly woman that had bought a couple of pies. Um, I think there's a much broader cross-section of people that really support the ideals behind this movement than people recognize or that the media portrays I'm not a dirty hippie but you know I'll take it if that's <laughs> what you want to call me right um, so I th and I think the encampment was a really important um, galvanizing space to get people engaged I think the protests I went down to a few protests were very motivating I also think that the kind of space they tried to carve out there in terms of community and how they ran the community was is a very important um, part of what they're trying to demonstrate, how we can really, you know, 
live together, work together towards the ideals that we all share. Um, Give me an example of, of one aspect of that that you can tra you translated into your community, into people like yourself, and middle class and um, stable jobs, that sort of thing. Right. Um, well, one of the things that I took out of that that we are using in Natick, uh, we actually had our first, I guess you would call it, general assembly. Um, we've decided right. to use a consensus model for our group's meetings and for decision making for the group. Okay. So we had some facilitators come out from Occupy Boston and, and teach us what facilitation is and run mm. the meeting for us um, th following the facilitation model, which is interesting because it's very foreign to most people. And even, you know, a lot of people in that room who are have been involved in different things or are activists on certain levels, um, it's, it's challenging, but there was consensus from the group that that was how they wanted to do it understanding that that sort of guarantees that the, the most people will have a voice in right. the decisions that are made. Right. So the people that, that attended these, these meetings, I mean, what I want to hear from you are a couple of anecdotes about what people said that, that transformed their opinion of the Occupy movement, like uh, especially the middle class sector, because they're mm -hmm. the ones that should really get up and do something. Um, what's interesting <coughs> at the first meeting that we had, there, again, a variety of people in the room, and the sentiment I heard the most was that people saying, you know, I was waiting for somebody to do something. I've been mad for right. so long, and I was wondering what was wrong with everybody else. You know, uh -huh. where is everybody? Why doesn't right. anybody care right. about this stuff? So I think the first thing that has been helpful is for people to see that there actually are other people that do care about these issues and are paying attention. Yeah. Um, you know, but living in the suburbs, you know, a woman there who had lost her home, and right. you know to foreclosure a woman there who has uh, you know a myriad of health issues and struggles with health care and um, insurance and has to live with her parents with her young child because she can't afford to pay for health insurance and and live on her own right um, so I think that in the suburbs it's somewhat a different audience and I think there's more shame associated with some of the issues that are a fallout of the economy and what's going on right now and mm. so there's less of a uh, openness about those things right but you know when we stand out we have visibilities every Saturday you know there are people that will drive by in their cars and sort of give us the thumbs up or, or before the holidays I was shopping at a local store and there was a you know middle-aged man waiting on me and I had an Occupy Bo Boston pin on and he said to me I like your pin ah, and then terrific. he kept talking to me about whatever we were talking about so it was Excellent. clear that he didn't really want to he's not going to come protest but he gets it so talk, talk to me about numbers mm -hmm. that you have, what you started with, what you've got now, and what you're aiming for. Um, you know, the first meeting, there were over 50 people who attended. So I have a contact list that you know, goes out to all those 50 people. We are promoting the meetings. Um, I have a Facebook page that's growing. I mean, I haven't set a number in mind, really. It's open to the public. It's open to everybody. But right. what's interesting to me is to note that there are I think it's over 50 occupies throughout the state that, that anyone knows of that have Facebook pages or a presence that, that they've made known. Okay. Um, and I was at a meeting with about 21 groups. So there's clearly a lot of this moving out into now, the suburbs. You say there's, there's a lot of um, different groups. Now, isn't that a bit confusing? So you've got 21 different groups. It, isn't that diffusing the, the momentum? No, it's it's actually building the momentum because okay. you know it, it's not just the you know however many people were in Dewey Square in that encampment as it right. was sort of tried as people tried to make it seem like it's just these you know crazy hippies that want to yes. camp out. Um, this has actually moved out into mainstream communities, and so you know you have Occupy Quincy, you have Occupy Salem, Occupy Peabody, Occupy Needham, Newton, Natick, Brookline. I mean, right. all of these communities, all the way out to you know the western end of the state. Um, so what that says to me is there's resonance around the messaging, and that people are picking up the message, and they're going to carry it forward. Um, we can't expect the change to come about from the people that took it to stay in the tents. Right. So you're using technology to, to get the word out. Um, mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. What sort of technology you're using, how successful it is? Um, I threw up a Facebook page in, with very limited technology. Had you done it before? I, just my own personal okay. page. But you right. know, so I made, I made a group that people are in. There was another one that was formally started that's a little larger. Um, but some of our uh, members of Occupy Natick are now starting a website that can be accessible to a variety of um, Metro West suburban communities to post their meetings on and what their activities are. Um, there's also a website, wecanoccupy.com, 
okay. that has been used to be sort of an educational and informational website for suburban communities to understand the Occupy movement, to learn more about the issues that we're trying to address. Now, is that part of the Occupy Boston group? Because they have a very good website and a they lot do. of resources. So are yeah. you working together with them, or is this uh, replicating, in a sense? Um, it's, it's not replicating. It's a little more focused. Um, and it is, it, this was the brainchild of somebody within the Occupy Boston movement who saw a need for, you know, the suburban groups to have just a little more focused informational okay. access. So, that, so you it's know. more localized. Right, right. And so if somebody goes on to that, uh, the, uh, the website again, tell me the website again. WeCanOccupy.com. WeCanOccupy.com. Mm -hmm. So if they go on there, what sort of local resources can, can they actually use to, to affect change in your community? Um, there's inf educational information about, you know, Citizens United ruling, money, you know, clean elections, um, the, the economic meltdown. So it's, it's a learning portal. There's information about all of the meetings that everyone's having. So those are posted there. There's also right. minutes from all of our meetings that are up there and Very any good. kind of announcements that, you know. And do you have a, a pool of resources in terms of um, what people in, in your community that are sympathetic to you can post, like lawyers, for instance, or uh, mortgage consultants, that sort of thing? Has that been? No, we haven't gotten that far That's yet. A <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> um, I mean, one so of the thing, one of the first things that we're working on right now is um, trying to pass resolutions at town meetings, non-binding resolutions, um, in support of ending corporate personhood, uh, and if enough town meetings and city councils do that, the message that we're sending to our legislative delegations is, hey, you know, we want the clean election law that we actually originally voted for that you decided right. not to fund enacted. And we're doing this at the grassroots level to show you our engagement. Okay, so um, talk to me about some of the issues. That's one of the issues that you're um, aiming for. Mm -hmm. what, would, what would be your, your perfect five achievements? Oh. Well, see, now, because we're following a consensus-based model, I can't speak for the group <laughs> in terms Come of on. what the five are, well, because we haven't defined idea. that I yet. That. I'm glad you, that's your disclaimer. Now you can yes. tell me. <laughs> um, you know, issues that came up for people were, you know, again, issues of clean elections, getting money out of politics, um, a fair working economy for people, um, you know, support for labor and unions. Right. Um, environmental issues are a big one. War and, as, and the, and the impact mean, of war on the economy. If, if you can also one. localize these, so the environment. Talk to me about the environment and ethic that you would, would you would try to uh, change. You're drilling down. Because <laughs> <laughs> ideally, the way it works is that we would form working groups and people that okay. are really invested in each far, issue. Then. Exactly. Okay. We're at the beginning. Okay. So tell me what you've achieved so far. Some concrete examples. Well, in the very short time, which is How about is it? two months. Two months, that's nothing. Two, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so we've been able to. <laughs> I was leading have you a, into that. Yeah, I have. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you for the setup. A couple of meetings, um, and it, you know, get the facilitation model in place because that right. was a big piece of it. Um, and then you know, passing our first proposal, which was to the resolution for the uh, town meeting. Um, setting up the working group that's going to work on our communication piece so that we can communicate effectively within the group right. um, and then get our message How out. How do you communicate within the group? Right now, primarily through the Facebook page I set up and then I have an email list and I, you know, what, a weekly email. What's the Facebook email. page so that um, the viewers can it's, go to it? Uh, Facebook.com slash Occupy dash Natick. Say that once again because they're confusing. Uh, it's facebook.com sla forward slash occupy hyphen natick. Got you. That's Good. the correct word. Excellent. And what are they going to find there? Um, I tend to put up, and it's an open page, uh, information about upcoming meetings, anything educational pieces that I think are relevant or helpful for people to see. Um, uh, and are these things coming from the Occupy Boston or? Just wh wh whatever you can find. Wherever I find them, right? Okay. They can be, you know, newspaper pieces or video pieces. So you you said that you know you go around, you have a badge on and things like that. Tell me about some people who have who have um, been inspired by what you're doing and got on the bandwagon, so to speak. Hmm. I think actually, if I could, a very humble moment. My own daughter 
who's 13, uh, had to write an essay for school about what makes a good leader. Hmm. And she had to cite several, you know, famous people, but then she wrote about her mom and how she, her mom was a great leader and she was very inspired by me. Okay. Which was very nice. Excellent. Well, that's fabulous because um, if you start it in the home, it can only spread outwards. Right. Betsy, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank um, you. It's been a, a real pleasure speaking to you and the best of luck with Occupy Natick. Thank and this you. has been Richard Bergen for Occupy Boston Live. Thanks so much. <laughs>